The Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. In Psalm 53, says, The Lord looked down from heaven to see if there's any who seek God to understand. Indeed, they've all turned aside. They together become filthy, corrupt. So there's none who does good. No, not one. God indicts us all in Romans chapters 1 through 3. There's uh, none good. There's none that seeketh after God. There is uh, none who understands. You know, there's countless passages of Scripture and verses that show our our condition before God, the danger that we are in uh, apart from Him, that we are separated from God. In Isaiah chapter 59, he says, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so he will not hear. When you say in your heart, well, where's the good news at? I'm hearing about a lot of condemnation. I'm hearing a lot about sin. I'm hearing a lot about uh, a depraved nature. I'm hearing uh, a really, it sounds to me like a hopeless message. Well, we'll get to that, friends. We're not saying these things to, uh, to hurt you or to be mean to you, to, uh, to be gloom and doom, but there is a reality of, of bad news, and very bad news at that, and we want you to understand how great that news is, and we can't make you understand, but by the grace of God here tonight, uh, He will quicken some of you. He will give you an understanding heart. He will. You will see the beauty and the glory of God at the cross uh, at Calvary and what God has done to heal us from our fatal disease, to, to deliver us from these curses, to deliver us. If you don't see how great your need is and how severe your malady is, you're not going to see the desperate need of a remedy. The doctor tells you you've got stage 4 cancer in your lungs and you need immediate surgery or tumor in your brain to get cut out and he shows you the x-ray, you're not going to tell the doctor, I don't have the cancer, when he shows you the evidence right there. You're going to get that done. You're going to get the surgery scheduled. Imagine until the doctor shows you you got a uh, cancer in your brain, a cancerous malignant tumor, it needs to be cut out, and you're going to die within four weeks. How fast did you move? Are you going to argue with the doctor and say you don't know what you're doing after the, the, the countless years of education and, and money? that they spend to get trained to diagnose you properly and say, well, doctor, I don't believe that I have cancer. Of course you're not going to do that. You're going to trust his opinion. And you're going to run to get the proper uh, procedure done to, to heal you of this or your only chance of survival is death. So I want you to think about something of far greater need. As we talk about this tonight, how great your disease of sin is. And all of us are born in sin, shaping in iniquity. And because of this, you're an enemy of God. And this sin doesn't get cured and purged off of your account. You're going to spend an eternity in hell. A far greater than just a physical death temporarily. You see how great your need is, ladies and gentlemen? How, what danger you're in tonight? Do you realize that, that this is so severe? It's worse than any type of cancer or malady upon the earth. So... Again, we, go, we, we set before you, we set before you here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, life and death, blessing and cursing, and that by the grace of God, He'd call you with an effectual call that goes into your soul, and that you would come to life, and that you would choose life, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. You think about how foolish you'd be to reject the doctor's diagnosis. It's all your fault you die in your sins. You're fully responsible for not being obedient to do the proper things done. Right now you're fully responsible to be obedient to the gospel and embrace the remedy, the only hope, the eternal Son of God. That the Son of Man would come to save a people like you and I that hate God. To rescue a people that are in opposition to God. That without strength, without hope, without God in the world, alienated from God, enemies in your mind by wicked works. But when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That Jesus justifies the ungodly. Because the scripture makes it very clear, folks. It is an abomination to God to justify the wicked and to condemn the just. And God will not violate his justice nor compromise his character or attributes for other attributes in any way, shape, or form. God's attributes are perfectly in agreement with one another. In unison, a holy God. And all of these attributes are, gonna, are magnified. And the end of all things is the glory of God, and they're magnified at the cross of Jesus Christ where the demands of justice were satisfied. But the people of God, through the person and the work of God the Son, that you have sinned against God, and you know that by your conscience, and you're an enemy of God in your sins on the way to eternal destruction. 
And you desperately need to be saved. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he's appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down to the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, that the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and his name should be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. This is peace with God, because God satisfied the demands of his justice. You violate God's law one sin, one time, damns your soul. And that justice that God requires is payment for your sin. The wages of sin is death. You're a dying creature here tonight. You're going to die in this body, and the body's going to return to the dust one day and then God is going to raise you from the dead to the resurrection of life or the resurrection of damnation at the great white throne of judgment oh he will give a supernatural body to those who rejected this message and rejected this Christ and gone their own way in their pride and their arrogance and said I don't need this remedy I'll heal myself I'll do my religious duties I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it I'm my own God I'll be my own idol and to those who've done such a thing and lived this way and die in this condition that supernatural body will be able to be eternally destroyed without being consumed it'll be able to endure the fiery indignation of Almighty God in the flames of hell. And it will not be consumed. It will not be annihilated, folks. This is terrifying. Oh, and your treason against God has brought you to a place now where you need to make a decision now. Where you stand, you're making one right now in your heart. What you think about this? Oh, and the Son of Man came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, he says, those who are well have no need of a doctor or a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Have you seen how vile of a sinner you are? Oh, have you seen the nature and the heinousness of your crimes against God? Oh, most of us in a society like this have no idea what sin is. Yeah, I'm not a good person. Mo no one is a good person, young man. Well, you're full of shit. You're an evil, wicked rebel against God until you're given the nature oh, of Jesus Christ. Because yes. Of no, because the Bible says so. Oh, okay. And you, God's word you says a lie. anything you want out of there. Absolutely right? not. I, but you're full you, of shit. Well, I'm full of the Holy Ghost by the grace you're of God, young of man. Shit. Otherwise, I'd probably be the same thing you're saying you now. And I'd be worthless like about. dumb. You're That's every one of our lies. It's dumb. Folks, Your time's up. you have seen, have you seen this heinous nature that you have before a holy and a righteous God? That the sinfulness of your heart, the corruption of your heart has led you away from God. And the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. That we are all like an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Ladies and gentlemen, that means there's no religious work you can do. There's nothing you have in you to merit a right standing with God. There's nothing you can do to earn forgiveness of sins. You can't pay back God for what you've done. Even if you never sinned again, from this day forward, you're going to hell. If you never committed one more crime in your life and thought what it need, you're still dead in sins. One time, this this is why justification, to be just in the eyes of God, how is it possible? And it is only in the infinite wisdom of God that he made the guarantee for his people through the person and work of his son, that the son of God born of a woman. He said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that because he became a man, because he became a man through the virgin birth, fully God and fully man, and lived the perfect obedient life that you and I could never live, fulfilling the law and the prophets and all righteousness and laying down his life. No one took it from him. 
but he laid down his life in his humility and was crucified. He came, humbled himself to the, to, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. This is, though my food is to do with the will, the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Oh yes, the will of God. To finish God's work, the eternal covenant between Father and Son that Jesus came to redeem His people from the curses of, of the law of disobedience. Oh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why was He crucified? So God's wrath would be poured out upon Him and all the curses of disobedience found in the Scriptures would fall upon Him without number, without measure. He drank the cup of divine wrath till every last drop was gone on that cross, until he gave up the ghost and said, it is finished. And it's finished. You can know this God. You can be restored to this God tonight and saved from this eternal judgment and healed of your sins as many as received him. To them he gave the power to become children of God to those who believe in his name who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Some of you, there's one step between you and death. Some of you don't know that right now, even tonight, your soul can be required of thee. You've trusted in your own works. You've trusted in your personal belongings. You're trusting in your own goodness like the man a few minutes ago. You're not a good person. You need Christ. The Lord is no one good but one that is God. The Lord is good. The Lord is a strong over the day of trouble. Call upon me. In the day of trouble I will deliver you. And you shall glorify me. Kiss the Son. Lest he be angry. And you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little. The wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. Every one of you is a child of disobedience. Until you've obeyed the gospel. Folks the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. In him we have redemption. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. It is by grace that you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works as anyone should boast. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saves us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, whom he pours out upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. This is the gospel of the grace of God, the everlasting kingdom of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, obedient to death, crucified, buried, rising again from the dead, and then ascending back to the right hand of Almighty God the Father, who has been ordained to judge the living and the dead when he comes again he's coming in flaming fire taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ these will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power what will you do tonight what will you do right now in your condition as the spirit of God working in your soul have you seen your desperate need? Cry out to God. Out of the heart one believes to righteousness. Out of the mouth confession is made into salvation. Jesus is your Lord. And to those who say that you know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you believe, even the demons believe and tremble. Do you want to know, a foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Tell me you've got a dead faith, a profession about God, that you walked down an aisle, you did some religious work, you taught Sunday school, oh, you served in the ministry and the worship team. Many worship leaders, many pastors, Sunday school teachers are going to go to hell. Oh, yes, examine yourselves as to whether you're in the faith. There are many churchmen and church attenders and those that are going to go to hell. Jesus, read Matthew 7 again tonight when you get home. Chapters 13, verses 13 through 23. I'll quote the last few. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, on that day many will come my name and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, cast out devils in thy name, and done many wonders in thy name, and then I would declare to them, Depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. How many of those, how many of you in this line have flattered yourself 
have appeased your conscience saying, I believe the pastor told me I was saved. Well, you know them by their fruits. Go bear fruits worthy of repentance. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water for the one who comes is mightier than I. And his sandals strap are not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. His wheat he will gather into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Oh, if you're not in His saving love, in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are under His holy hatred and wrath. Oh, you must embrace the Son of God. He bore that wrath. He came to save sinners. Believe on the Lord Thank Jesus you. Christ, and you shall be saved. May the Lord bless you, young man, in turning you from every one of your iniquities, and turning you from darkness to light, and the power of of Satan unto God. Flee from the wrath to come tonight. What mercy, what hope, what life, what joy, what peace we have. Only in the Lord Jesus, in Him, outside of Christ, is nothing but damnation. Oh, prove yourselves. Do you have a living faith in Christ? Are you more concerned about the cares of this life? The Son of Man, the Lord Jesus said, take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and the day of the Lord come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare upon all those who dwell on the whole earth. Where do you stand with God, folks? What's more important to you on the Lord's Day, this Lord's Day, Sunday, as the Apostle John, oh, spoke on the island of Patmos, I was, on the, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Are you in the Spirit on the Lord's Day? It's Sunday. To consecrate yourself to God. To get alone and proclaim the glory of God. To abide in the Word of God. To attend fellowship and church with other believers. Members of the body of Christ. The church is a building that's supposed to be for believers. Oh, may God make you a believer. Become a part of His church, a living spiritual organism. To go into a, a building to gather. Oh, as the Lord says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some. Repent and believe in this gospel tonight. The only way to God through the suffering, the atoning death of God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of His resurrection. He will say on that day, bring here those enemies of mine who do not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. You don't want this man to reign over you, you say. I don't want this man to reign over me. Then you are going to be in that category where the Lord God sends the angels of destruction to gather out of his kingdom all the defendant of those who practice lawlessness. They'll be cast in the furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell's a real place. In the center of the earth. Oh, he says this. Even if you go, you're still bound to Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth beyond measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he who is jubilant shall descend into it. Hell fire. The unquenchable fires of the wrath of God. But that's what you get saved from. Then you get in the love of God. To get into the everlasting grace of God. To be with the Lord. To be sanctified by the Holy Ghost. To be a blood but saint of the living God. And that is the result of why we're out here. To proclaim to you the only hope. For your soul in the world. That Jesus is coming again. To rule and reign in his millennial kingdom in all power. All authority has been given to him and all power in heaven and on earth. And you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven and hate the other. Oh, praise the Lord. Friends, this is a loving warning. What do you need to be saved from? Your sins. Who can save you from your sins? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord your God. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord your God. The King of Kings. And the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, our friends, your sins that you love so dearly is only dragging you to hell. It's taking you nowhere except hell. Our friends, it declares in verse John chapter 2 verse 4 and chapter 3 verse 10, He who says, I know him, does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 
is this that from God and to the devil are manifest that it is not that his righteousness is of God nor is it the son of his brother or friends this right here that's it to me that he come out today to practice righteousness this right here that's it to me that he come out today to seek out the Lord or friends repent and turn away from the sins this is the love you want from God, so don't watch you, so don't do Jesus, come me soon, oh friends, what are you going to die today, and you stand before the Holy God, and he says to you, why shall I let you enter into my kingdom, what would you say to him, it's because of good works, because there's nothing you can do to our salvation, it declares in Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, a man is not justified by the works of the law, by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Oh, my friends, that means there is nothing you can do. Just being a good person can make you right with God. Just being a good person can lead you unto the kingdom of God. Oh, friends, just doing good works, good deeds can make you or lead you unto the kingdom of God. It's only by trusting and obeying the gospel.